I just finished 12 days of Texas whiskey and frankly, I'm in serious need of scotch. A lot of scotch. Let's do this. <laughs> Welcome to Whiskey Riffs. If you're new here, my name's Kevin, and thank you for stopping by and watching my channel. I asked many of you what the bottle I should review first is out of my most recent purchase, and the majority said both. So here we are, two lovely bottles of scotch that I have never had before, and we're going to do a head-to-head -head between them. Now these bottles are very different, even though they're both space side distillery bottles. This one's from Glen Murray, and it is an 18 year old whiskey, which has uh, aged and first fill American oak casks. And then we have the Tamdu, which is their batch strength edition. This is batch number five. So very different. You can see this one is a much lighter whiskey and has an age statement on it. This one's a much darker whiskey and has no age statement. So basically what we're going up against is age versus casks. This one's in cherry casks. This one's in American oak. Now both of these say that they're first fill casks or Tamdu says it's mostly first fill casks. Let me go ahead and pour these so we can taste them and talk a little bit more about them. The Glenmore 18 is of their heritage edition and it's bottled at 47.2% ABV. It's non-chill filtered and it's probably a natural color as well. They have several expressions that are natural color and they don't say whether this one is natural color or not, either on the bottle or on the website, but I'm gonna take it as probably natural color. If anyone has different information about that, please let me know in the comments below. I paid $125 for this particular 18 year old scotch and I thought that was a decent price for it. The Tamdu is a batch strength space side whiskey with a 59.8% ABV. It's non-chill filtered and natural color, and it's mostly first fill Oloroso sherry casks. I paid a hundred five dollars for this in San Francisco at my local whiskey shop. All right, we have them both poured. When I was doing my research for the Glen Murray, I noticed that they had several different cask finishes that they can also offer for their different expressions. They had a port cask, they had sherry casks, they had two wine casks, and they even have a peated expression, which means I'm probably gonna wanna investigate more of the Glen Murray whiskeys because I like all those finishes and I certainly do like some peated whiskey. Having a space side peated is always an interesting adventure because peated whiskey is not limited to the islands. Now this Tamdu expression, especially the batch strength number five, was recommended by John, the Whiskey Neighbor, your friendly Canadian YouTuber, who picked this as his 2021 bottle of the year, which immediately made me want to go out and buy one. And luckily, I was able to purchase this at my local shop in San Francisco. Batch 5 is out of stock on their website, so you're probably gonna be better off trying to find the batch number six. But if you can get a batch number five, I hear it's a lovely dram which I'll find out in just a minute. Both Glen Murray and Tamdu are space-side distilleries, and they're both fairly close to each other. Uh, Glen Murray is near Elgin, which is about 20 miles north of the Tamdu distillery, which is near Abelauer. Interestingly enough, both these distilleries were started about the same time in 1897. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the Glen Murray because it is a non-finished whiskey and I think I'll have more subtle notes on this one than I would on a sherry finished one. Right off the bat, I get apple and pear and that malted note, very crisp, very refreshing, and some caramel notes, a little bit of citrus note, like a, like a spritz of citrus. Nothing heavy at all about this nose or anything that's overwhelming gonna punch you in the face. It is a good ABV at 47.2%, which helps them avoid chill filtering. You really don't need to do that. Distilleries do that because it helps the whiskey stay clear when ice is introduced or when the whiskey's cooled. I'm also getting like a melon sweetness on it. Lots of wood spice in that first taste, dark chocolate even, and nuts. I'm getting a lot of nuts on the flavor. I really am getting uh, apple pie notes when I'm, when I'm smelling this. I can get the, the notes from the crust, I can get the notes from that the lighter fruits, the apples. I'm getting more citrus on the taste. Maybe even a few coffee notes there. 
it's nutty. It's like a nutty coffee uh, bean for me. The finish is a little smoky and it's really nice and long. That is, that is an impressive finish. Really staying with me, which is so nice. Even though it's an 18 year whiskey, it's got some pretty decent spice to it. And that keeps it really light. And then that finish, the fruity flavors and everything are, are there in the front. And then you end up with this finish that is warm and nutty and kind of roasted. I, I get a, like a roasted coffee flavor at the end. Really like this so far. I, I am now even more interested in trying out their other expressions that are on their website. So this may be an expensive episode that I just started. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and try the Tamdu and see what we have on the other side of the coin. No age statement. Higher ABV, what are we up to here? This is the 59.8% ABV, pretty intense. And it's also aged in Oloroso sherry casks. Yep, that is definitely a different nose. Very sherry, very much darker fruits, dried plums, apricots, sweetness from the sherry, a nice vanilla on top. Yeah, there is nothing to complain about in the nose of this whiskey. Ooh, wow, that is a brilliant first taste. I got just this flush of fruit flavors and now i'm getting cinnamon on the finish and again a long finish whatever they've done with it it's such a nice sherried flavor and again i'm getting nutty flavors i mean a little bit of uh coffee the finish is not fruity the finish is cinnamon and spice and just just warmth all the way down but those first notes are all the raisins and and dried plums and just delicious uh sherry notes that are swarming your mouth let me go ahead and put some water in both of these because i think they might do well with a little bit of water they both have enough abv in them to give them some room to grow with the water and oh i like that when i'm dripping the water into the whiskey i can see the oils moving about which means they're definitely gonna get some experience that changes with both of these flavors. It made it even more refreshing on the nose. So much apple, this is, this is apple pie to me right now. I really like the, the sweet crusty uh, notes and the apple notes and the, just the, the brightness of it. I could just really sit and enjoy the, just a few drops of water really woke up that nose. Very lovely, very lovely. That knocked off a little bit of the spice on the taste. Just got more uh, soft, you know, like uh, like the flavors are just easier to take. Yeah, it's not a dramatic change, but it just gives some definition to some of those sweet flavors. And on the first taste, right after the water, I was getting even more of the that dough and the, the sweetness from that, and then the apples inside. This is just a really nice whiskey. 18 years is always a pleasant experience uh, to find in a, in a shelf, especially when they're not trying to skimp on the ABV or they're trying to kind of gouge you for prices. And you kind of know the brands I'm talking about when you start getting up into 18 years and they start charging you three and $400 for a bottle of whiskey. I'm sorry, that's a lot of price for a bottle of whiskey one that I'm not willing to pay most of the time. It has to be a pretty special experience to spend that much. Let's see what water did to the Tamdu here. See if it affected it in as nice a way. I am getting a little bit of leather notes now in the nose and a little bit of really deep dark berries and even more vanilla. Oh, that's nice. The spiciness fell away on the Tamdu with just, just a few drops of water and the Fruit flavors just got more interesting and and more merged. You know, like you don't taste so much separate flavors, you just taste a nice rounded sweetness and it just has character. I'm really impressed with the character of both these whiskeys. So if you've had either of these whiskeys and you've added water to them, I'd like to hear your thoughts about it and what your experience was because I'm finding that both of them do well with just a little bit of water. Both of these are lovely, lovely trams. I would not push either of them away. And they're quickly rocketing up to 
my favorite whiskeys uh, that I've had in, in quite a while. You know, I'm always looking for new experiences in whiskey. And so anytime that you find something that you find interesting and want to suggest it to me, please throw it in the comments because it wouldn't have had this Tamdu if it wasn't for John and his uh, whiskey channel. So I appreciate that. Thank you, John, for this. And thank you for the people that have suggested the Glamouray because I wasn't looking at that either. But I got some great comments and I'm always tracking those and putting them on my shopping list. You're very good at helping me spend my money. Thank you. So which one would I recommend out of these two whiskeys? If you had to choose, it depends. Do you like sherry whiskeys? If you do, the Tamdu is an excellent option and it's maybe a little more expensive than uh, some of the other ones that are out there, but I think they do such a great job and it is a limited release. Even though it's no age statement, I think their selection of casks is well done. So the Tamdu is great if you're looking for more sherry notes. If you're looking for just a fantastic aged space side whiskey, this Glimmer 18 is just wonderful. I am so happy with both these. This has been one of the most productive shopping trips that I've ever had recently. And thank you to everyone who said head to head. Let's taste them both at the same time because I really enjoyed this episode. This has been just lovely. And maybe it's more lovely because I had to do, I didn't have to do, I mean, <laughs> I chose to do 13 days straight of drinking high proof Texas whiskeys and that was probably a little overboard for me. I need a little more variety in my life and I certainly need more scotch in my life. So uh, I appreciate this episode so much. I'm going to enjoy both of these later while I'm editing this video and until the next episode, take care of yourself, take care of those people around you and cheers. Such good whiskeys. I've missed Scotch so much. <sighs> as much as I like experiencing other whiskeys like Texas whiskeys, this is my home. You know, I really love Scotch more than any other any other type of whiskey. Sorry, Texas. <laughs>